The next challenge is Web Scorescope by Brownie in Motion. I wonder if that's like Einstein Brownie in Motion or just literally a Brownie in Motion. But anyways, uh, it says I'm really struggling in this class. Care to give me a hand? And we're given a web link. Um, this looks like a legit website, uh, but it says assignment details. This is a Python programming homework assignment. Use the template, complete the task, uh, blah, 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 doc strings, no local test. You can run as many times as you want. We can download the template. We can put it here. We upload. It grades, and we get a bunch of errors for not implemented. Um, so it looks like how many? T there's 22 test cases. Um, what's strange is there's some hidden one down here, something about pre-images, which is interesting, and then adding and subtracting numbers. Anyways, uh, let's, let's take a look at the template. So this is that template file we were given. Uh, it says dice 1001, homework 3, author, collaborators, list. So looks like homework, so it looks like we need to implement a add function, uh, easy enough, a longest word function, so this was under the web category, but <laughs> right now it seems more like a programming sort of thing, return the longest common subsequence, okay, this doesn't seem too bad, return your favorite number must be the same as my favorite number, um, doesn't sound possible. And then factor, given a number, or given an integer, find two integers whose product is n. So maybe if n is small. And then this is where I realized things were probably not a programming challenge, where it says given a SHA-256 hash, uh, find a, the pre-image. Um, so probably not possible, not within the time limit of a CTF challenge. Uh, and magic, guess the random number I'm thinking of. Um, also not possible. So it sounds like we're going to have to resort to some trickery to get the test to pass. Um, I spent a little bit of time on this challenge. Originally, I thought this was a challenge where you're supposed to like break out of the auto grader and like get shell on the system and there's a flag or something. Um, I spent some time on that, or like maybe there was like a hidden function that you know had the flag string defined somewhere in there, and so you're just going to have to like traverse over Python code objects or something. Um, so I, I did open a ticket eventually with the dice uh, group. And uh, they explain that your only goal is to pass all the test. Um, so uh, that that is our goal. It, it isn't to like get shell on the system. All we have to do is pass the test. Uh, anyways, um, so let's start messing around. So the first thing that would uh, be obvious is we're running remote code on this system. So like, is there anything that's stopping us from doing import OS system ls, something like this? Um, so we can take this template. Let's submit it. Score scope, template, upload. And we get, there was a problem grading your submission. Make sure your submission does not open files, import extra modules, run shell commands, or do anything too fancy. Uh, so that's a bummer, so we don't get anything easy. Um, what else can we do? Uh, if we start implementing some of these, so let's do return A plus B. Let's take a look at this. Um, we do get some successes. Uh, that's cool. Uh, is there, we don't get print statements, but we do see the exception not implemented error. So what if we were to raise uh, exception, hello world. And we get information. So we have a way to leak information now. Um, cool. So at this point, um, I'm going to skip over a lot of the stuff I tried. I tried doing the inspect module to maybe see if we could look at the stack frames and see who's calling in. Um, just I want to learn more about the environment that this code is being executed in. Uh, but I don't think, I think it got mad if I did too much with the inspect module. Um, I tried to do the same with sys, um, but it didn't let me. Eventually, I remembered from a previous CTF challenge, uh, this one, IDEC uh, misc pyjail. Um, there's a cute little trick here, uh, import main, that you can use to see the top level execution environment. Um, so what we can do is import main and take a look around to see uh, what is happening. So, oops, we need this, this, what is it? Hmm, that was strange. Uh, do, 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 string, and let's do dear main. Um, so this is going to load the top-level execution environment. So, for example, like if you run Python, we do main. Oh, oh, sorry, name. This is the module name, and so the very top-level thing is always main. 
And you probably see this in Python scripts a lot if you do name is equal to main. That means like you're actually running the script. Um, so we're going to be loading whatever is running our script. And then we're going to do deer on it just to see what's uh, all the everything defined in scope. And then we're going to cast that to a string. And this way we can kind of inspect that global object or that global context. Um, template. And cool, it worked. So now we can see all the variables that are defined over there. Uh, let's get rid of this. Save. So in the top level context, there is a couple different things. There is a silent result, a submission importer, a test case, a test loader, a, t a text test runner, annotations, built-ins, cache, doc, file, loader, name, package spec, current, f, uh, guessing that's the JSON module, some sort of stack, standard out, standard error, a submission, a suite, sys, test, and tests. All right, um, so because these start with a capital S um, or capital letters, these are most likely classes of some sort. Um, annotations, these are all the built-in things, not too exciting. We could try loading the sys module and doing something clever, but like I said, after I was trying to do stuff with that for a while, but like I said, I reached out to the, the dice group, uh, their ticketing thing, and they said, all we have to do is pass the test. Um, so if we look, uh, F, I, we, it's not too exciting. If you play with it, this is a file to dev null. Um, JSON is the JSON package. Stack is just a array. I'm not really sure what it's used for. These are probably file handlers for standard out. Um, submission is the string of our Python code, our actual template. And suite is actually the thing that we're interested in. So this is the thing that defines all the test cases. So we can take this and do main.suite. Uh, I wonder if this will work. This should probably work. Um, so let's see what is defined in sweet. Cool. A bunch of crap. Uh, let me view... Where's word wrap? There we go. So sweet is this. And so it is a bunch of test suites. So this is how you can do unit testing in Python. Um, if we look at an example real quick. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Put an example in here. Yeah, I guess so. Here we go. Uh, test string method. So it's a unit test case. It defines a bunch of tests in here. Um, yeah, not too exciting. Here's another test suite. Uh, config test, blah, blah, blah. So we can see it's classes that implement the unit test test case, and then they define a bunch of functions in them. And then you can run that. And so I guess this is similar to what we have. So Instead, they called it the sweet variable, but they call sweet, and then they pass that to some runner object. And oh, here we saw that test text runner. Um, so I guess they're going to create a test text runner, and then they're going to call dot run on our sweet. Cool. So we need all the th everything defined in sweet to pass. And so this is the sweet. We can see there's a top level sweet object. It defines a bunch of tests, which is embedded in the test are more test sweet objects that have even more test uh, that have even more test. A couple of tests are none, which is interesting. And then we get an actual test object. So here's a test object, and it's just test, add test, and we're given a test method of test add positives. So if we go back to our submissions, was there a test add positive? Yeah, there's the, the first test. So this function is going to be called, and it might raise an error, or um, let's look at unit test. Uh, where's an example? Or it's going to do these asserts. So we just don't want it to do any of these asserts. We want all the asserts to be true. Cool. Um, but since we can grab this object, we can modify it and have it just not do anything. Um, and so that's what the solution is. I don't want to pain you with watching me type out crappy code. Um, but this is the actual solution that I ended up doing. Again, pretty simple once you know what you're doing. Uh, do -do -do, let's delete all this crap. So what it's going to do is it's going to grab the main module and it's just going to call this not test function I defined. And so it's going to go through the suite object, main.sweet. If the suite is equal to none, it's going to skip it. Um, this is a recursive function. And then if the suite dictionary, um, so you can play with the suite and see what keys it defines. It doesn't define much, but there is one called test method name. What we're going to do is we're going to find all the test functions and instead of having it call the function with all the asserts and stuff, we're just going to have it call this not function, which I defined up here, which does nothing. 
Um, so we're just going to null out or knock out all the test functions. So that way when the, the code runs, the code doesn't do anything. It's not going to throw any asserts. And uh, yeah, well, it'll just pass everything, including like there was that hidden test, which we have no idea what it's actually doing. Um, that should also pass because uh, yeah, it's just, it's not going to do anything. So let's uh, load in, I think it was called backup. So we're passing in all those knobs. Oops. And cool, uh, all the tests passed. And because of that, DICE still more secure than Gradescope. So I'm guessing this is based off of some website called Gradescope. But anyways, fun challenge. I'm not really sure why this was web. It seemed more like a, not like a PyJail. So I'm guessing there's probably other solutions. Um, but yeah, fun challenge.